right? So really, it's just a matter of multiplying the two things. So pop them in your calculator and see if it gives you the zero vector. If it does, then you have yourself a null space. If it doesn't, then you don't have yourself a null space. Null space, by definition, is a subspace of Rn. So you don't have to worry about testing those conditions. So if you've established something with a null space, then you're good to go. Everything else is going to play in. Um, important rule, or the one that gets you started, or the most important property, would be that the zero vector is part of the set. And so if you're solving a homogeneous equation, you're establishing vectors that would give you the zero vector through multiplication. So you're basically guaranteeing that the zero vector is going to be in there somewhere. All right, so null space by definition. Uh, column space, well, I gave you the notation earlier, col A, set of all linear combinations of columns of A. If A is equal to A sub 1 to the raise of N, then the column mm -hmm. space is your span of all the elements in A through 1 through A sub N. All right, so there's really nothing more to it than that. Uh, column space is also a subspace, all right? So you're looking at this really kind of the same way you would as the uh, when we're solving the equation AX equals B back in the first unit. The solution to the homogeneous equation ended up, it, well, is now being renamed as the null space. The solution to the particular, uh, particular equation would be your column space. But the, um, the easiest way to handle column space is really to just address the basis of the column space because that's really the most uh, important components. Um, the this example parts of it need work, so I'm just going to kind of kind of nitpick a little bit or pick out the important components. All right. So if the column space of A is a subspace of R. K, what is K? All right, so uh, this kind of um, sort of a misplaced example because really what it's talking about is the dimension related to the column space of the matrix. And really specifically what it's telling us to figure out is the number of vectors in the basis of the column space of A. All right, so which requires us to row reduce this. Shockingly. Yeah, it's not, not like we haven't done this like a hundred times already. Uh, so three by four. So, reduced row echelon form, and we get this bad boy here. All right, so this would be some kind of coefficient matrix, right? Not uh, the entire uh, linear system. So all we're doing is looking for pivot values. Anything that would be considered linearly independent. So that would be this guy, this guy, and this guy. All right, so you could define it any way you want. You know, C for column, R for row, you can V1, V2, V3, whatever. What's that? K would be three, yeah. But also, specifically, you want to identify the basis of column A, the column space of A, would be the set. Uh, I'll go V for vector, V1, V2, V3, uh, V4, sorry. All 
All right, so the number of vectors in the subspace of RK, so K is going to be 3. Why well, this is also known as the rank of the matrix. So the number of elements that make up the basis of the column space is also known as the rank. I actually wanted it to be find the null space of A. really kind of built towards that. All right, so this is part B down here. All right, solution to the homogeneous equation, so pop a few zeros on the outside. So again, it's a solution to AX equals zero. We're looking at x1 equals negative 9 x3, x2 equals 5 x3, and x4 equals 0, which would make x3 a free variable. So x1, 2, 3, and 4. Would be x3 we got a negative 9 we got a 5, we got, let me just write equals x3, so x3, or x3, jeez, falling apart. So then x3 would be coefficient 1, plus well everything else would be just a zero vector right oh, so we don't need anything else and right, so this is our null space uh, not that it matters but Correct. And so that should coincide with what we have in our reduced row echelon form. So whatever the pivot values uh, cover within the matrix, anything that's left over would make up your null space. Right. So in this case, the, the third column here corresponds to x3. All right. So 
there's some properties that are listed here. Uh, some of them I think are common sense and some of them are uh, not so much. Um, kernel is just another name for null space. And uh, range is talking about column space. So uh, I just threw that in there because you might see that somewhere, but it's not, they're not terms that I typically use. Oh, I looked, but I didn't, I looked, but I didn't look 